Good morning, Spark Sunday School. I have a story for us this morning. It goes like this. Jesus told us this story to remind people that every day is a gift from God that we should use wisely. Once there was a man who had a vineyard. This man loved figs, so he planted a fig tree. Mmm, he couldn't wait to eat the figs from his tree. Every year, the man came to the vineyard to check on his tree. The first year, no figs. The second year, no figs. The third year, no figs. The man told the gardener, I planted this fig tree because I love figs. Every year I check, but still no figs. Cut this tree down. But the gardener was smart. Wait one more year, he said. Let's take special care of it and give it one more chance. It'll give you the best figs you've ever tasted. Jesus taught a different way in this story. Jesus told us that people don't necessarily deserve the good or the bad that happens to them. If I win the lottery, it's just, uh, it's just good luck. It doesn't mean I'm good, a good person. And if a tornado destroys my house, that's just bad luck. It doesn't mean I'm a bad person. I don't deserve either one. Bad things happen to good people all the time, don't they? Can anyone think of some people that we have prayed for recently at church that are facing things like illness or loss? When someone gets sick, we should never think that that person really had it coming. Even people who make bad choices about their health don't deserve to die. Has anyone ever seen a fig tree? Has anyone eaten a fig? How does it taste? Would you want a fig tree that never produced any figs? If people like us are the fig tree in this story, what kind of things might be the fruit that we could produce? Helping others, serving God, going to worship, right? Jesus expects us to live like we believe in him and follow his ways. He gave us lots of ideas of how to bear good fruit. Feeding the hungry, visiting the lonely, caring for the sick, and so on. Do you think this story means that Jesus expects us to be perfect? Nah. The parable that Jesus told us about the fig tree teaches us that we get more than one chance to get it right. What do you think of that? Pretty awesome, right? So I want you to remember that every one of us has a chance every day to be a bearer of good fruit, which is doing good things. God, you give us life and love. Your love for us is constant and shown through your grace and forgiveness. On this day, we pray that you would give us vision, strength, and courage to bear good fruit. For all these good things, we pray. Amen. Shall I be saved?
worship you forever. Good morning. Welcome to worship at St. Stephen Lutheran. We gather today to hear the word of God, to share in the Lord's Supper, and to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed. Today is the third Sunday in Lent, and this morning's scripture readings speak an urgent warning to us, repent or perish. And yet there's also a word of promise in the story of a patient gardener who is willing to nourish the barren fig tree into its fruitfulness. Let us now prepare ourselves for worship. With a deep breath and a moment of silence, let us center ourselves in the presence of Christ with us. In the name of God, who makes a way in the wilderness, walks with us, and guides us on our pilgrimage. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Holy One, we confess that we have wandered far from you, we have not trusted your promises. We have ignored your prophets in our own day. We have squandered our inheritance of grace. We have failed to recognize you in our midst. Have mercy on us. Forgive us and turn us again to you. Teach us to follow in your ways. Assure us again of your love and help us to love our neighbor. Amen. Beloved in Christ, the word draws near to you, and all who call out to God shall be saved. In Jesus' name, God comes to you again and again and gathers you under wings of love. In Jesus' name, your sins are forgiven. God journeys with you and teaches you how to live in love. Amen.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Eternal God, your kingdom has broken into our troubled world through the life, death, and resurrection of your Son. Help us to hear your word and obey it, and bring your saving love to fruition in our lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from 1 Corinthians. The Apostle Paul writes, I do not want you to be unaware, brothers and sisters, that our ancestors were all under the cloud and all passed through the sea and all were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea and all ate the same spiritual food and all drank the same spiritual drink for they drank from the spiritual rock that followed them and the rock was Christ. Nevertheless, God was not pleased with most of them and they were struck down in the wilderness. Now these things occurred as examples for us, so that we might not desire evil as they did. Do not become idolaters as some of them did. As it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink, and they rose up to play. We must not indulge in sexual immorality as some of them did, and 23,000 fell in a single day. We must not put Christ to the test, as some of them did, and were destroyed by serpents. And do not complain, as some of them did, and were destroyed by the destroyer. These things happened to them to serve as an example, and they were written down to instruct us, on whom the end of the ages have come. So if you think you are standing, watch out that you do not fall. No testing has overtaken you that is not common to everyone. God is faithful, and he will not let you be tested beyond your strength. But with the testing, he will also provide the way out so that you may be able to endure it. Word of God, word of life, thanks be to God. Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. At that very time, there were some present who told him about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. Jesus asked them, Do you think that because these Galileans suffered in this way, they were worse sinners than all other Galileans? No, I tell you, But unless you repent, you will all perish as they did. Or those 18 who were killed when the Tower of Siloam fell on them, do you think that they were worse offenders than all the others living in Jerusalem? No, I tell you. But unless you repent, you will all perish just as they did. Then he told this parable. A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard. And he came looking for fruit on it and found none. So he said to the gardener, 
See here, for three years I have come looking for fruit on this fig tree, and still I find none. Cut it down, why should it be wasting the soil? He replied, Sir, let it alone for one more year, until I dig around it and put manure on it. If it bears fruit next year, well and good. But if not, you can cut it down. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Two weeks ago, we entered the season of Lent with ashes on our foreheads and with a deep and difficult truth ringing in our ears. You are dust, and to dust you shall return. True as those words may be, they are shocking to hear and to say sometimes, especially when I'm marking an ash cross on the forehead of a baby or a child. Well, that child's mortality is just as real as it is for any of us. Naming such a reality is particularly sobering when that life in front of me is so full of potential, so full of promise. And yet, whatever our age, we spend most of our time looking ahead toward the future with a sense of expectation for what is coming. We plan out our days and our weeks. We plan careers. We plan for summer vacation. We look ahead on the calendar for those milestones that are coming, the graduation, the wedding anniversary, the birthday. And most of the time, we get to take for granted that one day will follow another until we get that phone call in the middle of the night or until a tornado strikes, leaving destruction and devastation behind. Two two years ago this week, the reality of the coronavirus pandemic struck home here in the United States with full force, and life as we knew it suddenly ground to a halt. Life is fine until it isn't. And then, in one way or another, we are confronted with the truth, which is that time is a gift not a promise or a guarantee. We are dust, and to dust we shall return. In our reading this morning, we hear how one day a group of people approached Jesus about a horrible local tragedy that had taken place. We don't know the details, only that it was a deadly demonstration of brutal violence by the governor of the Roman occupation, Pontius Pilate. And just as these public tragedies do for us, this event filled the community with questions. Why? Why had this happened to them? And was this a judgment for some sin that the victims had committed? Jesus' answer to these questions was quite clear. Did this happen because they deserved it or because these were more sinful than other people that were in the temple that day? No, it was not. And then to make sure that we get the point, Jesus tells the story of another local tragedy about a tower that fell near Jerusalem. And he asks, did these 18 deserve their fate? Again, he says, no, they did not. It's a clear answer, and yet I wish Jesus had said more, much more. I wish he had given us some clear explanation for why bad things happen, especially to good people. Because then we would have an answer that we could cling to when we face our own personal tragedies, when we are struggling to understand 
when we want to know why. But instead of providing us with those answers, Jesus changes the subject. Unless you repent, you will all perish just as they did, he says. He says it twice, just exactly the same way. Repent, or you will perish as they did. Now, I want us to be careful here. Yes, Jesus has said time and time again that there is a judgment to come. But he is not here saying that judgment comes in the form of human tragedies like these. This isn't a threat to the crowd that if they don't shape up, they too will get struck down in the temple or crushed by a falling tower. If he were to say that, it would contradict the clear point that he has just made, that those victims were not being punished for sin. We have to dig deeper to understand the connection here. And we see that the real issue here is about time. It's about the sense of urgency that comes when we realize that time is a gift, not a guarantee. We realize just how precious the gift of time is when our lives are interrupted by sudden death an accident, or a flood, or a fire. These events confront us with the truth of our mortality, of our fragility. Our suffering fills us with questions that don't have easy answers, while also giving us a great deal of clarity. Clarity about what we can take for granted and what we cannot. Twenty years ago this week, my life was interrupted like that. It happened on March 18, 2002. I was caught up in the usual rhythms of my young adult life. At the time, I was working for a software company, and on that Monday afternoon, I was driving through downtown D.C. on my way to my monthly customer meeting. But my cell phone rang when I was about a block from the parking lot. The moment I saw that it was my mother calling, I knew something was wrong, and it was. She was calling from the hospital, and my dad had just collapsed from a ruptured aneurysm. And he died before I could get to the hospital. He had just turned 65 in December. And just like that, the Earth's axis shifted, and my whole life changed forever. Because in the process of working through my grief, I began to question practically everything about the life that I was living. I had thought everything was going fine, but soon realized it wasn't. As I reconsidered my understanding of what success looked like, what happiness looked like, and as I wrestled with my sense of what my life purpose was meant to be, coming face to face with how precious and finite our lives are at the age of 28, I felt a new sense of urgency, urgency to make changes, urgency to take some new risks. As grief turned my life upside down, I emerged with a new sense of purpose and a deeper faith and trust in God than I had ever experienced before. I believe that it's this kind of a moment of awakening that Jesus is talking about here in today's reading as he calls us to repentance. To repent is not just about turning away from specific acts of wrongdoing. It's about reorienting our whole lives around God. 
It's about recalibrating the plans that we make. It's about assessing our sense of purpose as we seek God, as we seek to know God's will and to pursue it. Because if we don't have an unlimited amount of time, then the moment for us to turn toward God, it's now. Jesus had a deep personal understanding of that sense of urgency that comes with mortality. He had entered into our human limitation, and now he was on the way to Jerusalem where he knew, he knew that he would be betrayed and beaten and crucified by those in authority. He knew he didn't have much time left with the disciples nor did he have much time left to teach the crowds. So there is a sense of urgency here in his call to repentance because he knows the end is coming. The judgment is coming. John the Baptist had said, bear the fruit worthy of repentance as he baptized the people in the River Jordan. And today, John's words are echoed in Jesus' parable about the fig tree in the vineyard. There is a sense of urgency here. The tree must bear fruit. That is its purpose for living. And if it won't bear fruit, then it will be cut down. And yet the parable's message is also full of mercy. Because this unfruitful fig tree is being given another chance. Instead of giving up on the tree, the gardener commits to nurturing it into fruitfulness. The tree has been given the gift, the precious gift, of more time. Time to grow, time to bear fruit, time for what an old prayer book called the amendment of life. And we receive this same gift the gift of time for the amendment of our lives whenever we repent, as we confess our sin and the lack of fruitfulness that proves how we have failed to orient our lives and our time and our priorities around God. We repent trusting in the work of the gardener to care for us and nurture us in forgiveness into fruitfulness. But waking up to the truth of our lives doesn't have to wait. It doesn't have to wait for a local tragedy to wake us up or for personal tragedy to make us question everything. The time for repentance is always now. Not just during the 40 days of Lent, but each and every day of our lives. We rise every morning remembering our baptism remembering the promise of divine mercy, a mercy that offers us second chances and third chances and many more. And yet each day, it only has 24 hours. Time is precious and limited. So now is the time to return to the Lord our God Now is the time to center our lives in God's grace and to bear fruit worthy of repentance. The time is always now. For we are dust, and to dust we will return.
let us profess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Drawn close to the heart of God, we offer these prayers for the Church, the world, and all who are in need. We pray for the Church, around the world, in all its forms, for pastors, deacons, bishops, chaplains, and mission developers, for church councils, committee chairs, and all lay ministry leaders, for congregations that contemplate difficult decisions about the future of their ministry. Merciful God, receive our prayer. For those called into positions of civic responsibility, for judges, attorneys, and court administrators tasked with uncovering truth and delivering justice, for activists and community leaders who cast a vision of a more compassionate and equitable society, merciful God, receive our prayer. For the advocacy efforts of this congregation, for those whose faith leads them to speak difficult truths and engage in difficult conversations with policymakers, for those who promote mercy over vengeance or retaliation. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We mourn the multitudes who have died in the war in Ukraine. We cry out for an end to the aggression towards their country Protect those fighting to defend their country. Defend all innocent civilians from any harm. Give courage to all world leaders to seek a swift and peaceful end to this war. May President Putin's heart be changed by the working of the Holy Spirit. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We pray for all those things for which we have gratitude and are thankful. Let's take a moment to type our gratitudes in the comments section. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We pray for all those things for which we have concerns and weigh heavily upon us. Let's take a moment to type our concerns in the comments section. Merciful God, receive our prayer. For those who call upon you for mercy, for all who live in poverty and experience hunger, for any who feel tested beyond their strength, for those who are hospitalized or near death, and for all in need of healing, we pray by name for Edward, Abby, Lori, Gary, Lori, Stacy and family, Matt, Bill, Jeff, Jim, Ron, Carrie, Mary, Deanna, Jan, Sue, Betty, and Michael, as well as all those listed on the prayer list, typed in the comments section, and remembered in our hearts. Merciful God, 
receive our prayer. For those whose earthly journeys have ended, we give thanks. We pray by name for Randy Williams, Larry Brown, Roger Dannon, Wilma Skazinski, James Zog, Patty Crispin, Fred Pudens, and Reese Cairo. With all the saints, we praise you for the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Accept the prayers we bring, O God, on behalf of a world in need for the sake of Jesus Christ. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. As our musicians offer their musical gifts, I invite you to make an offering of your own. If you'd like to make a financial offering in support of God's ministry here at St. Stephen, that offering could be made online or sent here to the church. I also invite you to prayerfully make an offering of your own time and energy as you live each day as a disciple. Let us pray. Extravagant God, you have blessed us with the fullness of creation. Now we gather at your feast where you offer us the food that satisfies. Take and use what we offer here. Come among us and feed us with the body and blood of Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. 
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. O God, creator of our wilderness world, O God, savior of the lost, O God, comforter of the sick and suffering, we give you thanks for your everlasting might. We glorify you for your covenant of mercy. For 40 days you cleansed the earth with the waters of the flood. For 40 days you illumined Moses with your, the words of your law. For 40 years you fed your people with manna from heaven. You became truly human in Jesus, our brother. For 40 days, with fasting and prayer, he renounced the power of the devil. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. We extol his life. Amen. Amen. We lament his death. Amen. Amen. We celebrate his resurrection. Amen. Amen. Transform us, O God, with your lively spirit. Make this food into manna for our journey, the body and blood of your Son. Grant us with the Ninevites 40 days of repentance. Teach us your words of wisdom and justice. Renew the whole earth with baptismal grace. At the last, lead all your pilgrim people through our deserts to your Easter garden. To you, O God, creator, savior, comforter, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be our worship and praise, adoration and thanksgiving, now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. As you take the bread and wine that you have prepared for this meal, hear this invitation. Here is food and drink for the journey. Take and be filled. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you.
May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Let us pray. Blessed Jesus, in this rich meal of grace, you have fed us with your body, the bread of life. Now send us forth to bear your life-giving hope to a world in need, that, inspired by the gifts of baptism, we may live among God's faithful people, hear the word of God, and share in the Lord's Supper, proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed, serve all people following the example of Jesus, and strive for justice and peace in all the world. Amen. As we are sent from this service into our service in the world, I offer a few reminders and invitations. First is that as we prepare for our Easter celebration on April 17th, we are gathering an offering for Easter flowers for the sanctuary. You're invited to make a gift in honor, memory, or celebration of a person or event. If you'd like to make such an offering, order forms are available here at the church. The form was also emailed out in our Friday email. Our midweek services are continuing during Lent, and and you are invited to join us on Wednesday at 6 p.m. for Holden Evening Prayer here in the sanctuary. This service does include Holy Communion. And I'm sharing a sermon series called Half Truths, where we are exploring some common Christian sayings and what they get right and not right about our life with God. This week, we'll be talking about God won't give you more than you can handle. Now receive this blessing. You are children of God, anointed with the oil of gladness and strengthened for the journey. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, remain with you and bless you always. Amen. Like sweet.
We are children of God, led each day to love and serve all people. We are called by Christ to live every day as disciples, so that all people will know Christ's love. So, as disciples, let's go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let all God's people say, Amen. God, I'm on my knees again. Need my 